welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to show you one of our all-time favorite quick and simple 15 minute meals. One of the biggest benefits of working from home is being able to cook yourself a meal, but at the same time that one hour lunch break can sometimes feel a lot shorter if that time isn't used very well. On top of that, when you're super busy, it doesn't always feel great when you have to spend a lot of time in the kitchen cooking, cleaning, just to prepare yourself a simple lunch. So we spent a lot of time figuring out a quick and simple way to make a nutritious and delicious lunch that we want to share with you guys today. So. I'm gonna get right into it. I'm gonna get this apron on and we're gonna have a look at the fridge to see what we're working with today. So one of the benefits of this recipe is that it's really flexible and it can work with any vegetables and protein that you happen to have in the fridge. So we're gonna have a look today to see what we got. So it looks like today we're working with a little bit of asparagus. We've got a couple of bell peppers in here. And I see a bunch of broccoli rub. And for protein, we have a little bit of leftover chicken that we cooked last night as well as some sausages from our friends over at Radical Roots Farm in Connecticut. Shout out to Alicia and Ryan. I'm also gonna grab an onion. A white or red onion will do for this, and honestly, again, anything really works. It's really just a question of what you have laying around at home. So before we get started with the prep, I always like to set out a few small bowls. So this one will be for the onion. This will be for trash and any scraps that we'll throw away or compost. And this will be for the rest of the vegetables. So, a couple things about onion. First off, it goes in its own bowl because I like to soften onions up a little bit first just so there's a bit of textural contrast. If you put all the vegetables in right away, they all kind of get soft and they don't really retain their crunch. So I prefer to put in onion first and then the other vegetables later. And second, when dicing onion, you always want to leave the root on because the second you take the root off, it starts to bleed and that's when it starts to get really hard to not tear up and just have a lot of discomfort in your eyes. So with the onions, we want to start by lopping off the top, popping that into our discard bowl. Then straight down the top through the root, keeping it on. And then we peel off the skin. Then we go down ribbons through the top. One cut through here, and then we're dicing. And what you end up with is just the root at the end and no waste. So for peppers, it's super simple. We just wanna take off the stem, put it stem side down, and then we shave off the sides of the peppers so that we don't get any of the seeds coming out. So just shaving it down the sides. And all you're left with at the end is the core with all the seeds. With the peppers, as well as really all of the ingredients in this recipe, we wanna dice them up to a uniform size as this makes it a lot easier to eat. What I mean by this in this case is that everything is being diced up into small cubes, so it's kind of awkward to eat if some of the ingredients are small and cube-like, but others are cut into long strips or ribbons. So next we have our asparagus, and these tend to have some overly fibrous bits at the end of the stalk, which kind of just snap off naturally if you break them off. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to go ahead and just chop off the ends, because these aren't super nice to eat. I'll pop those in the trash bowl. Once again, we kind of want to get them to about the same size as the other ingredients so that they all cook at the same time and have a similar texture. Asparagus is always super nice to have around because the fibers in asparagus are really nice for our gut. Our gut bacteria really, really like asparagus fibers. And on top of that, it lasts for a long time in the fridge if you just submerge it in a bit of water. Lastly, we have our broccoli rob. So this has been sitting in the fridge for a little while and the stems, the bottoms of the stems look a little bit dry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lop those off and then pop those into the discard bowl. Then we just go ahead and dice to about the same size once again. All right, so the vegetables are pretty much done. What we're left with now is a bowl of our onions, the rest of our vegetables, and also a bowl of scraps, which we can either compost or discard if we don't have a compost pile. So moving on to the proteins. The beauty of this recipe is that you can use anything you have in your fridge, be it raw proteins or cooked proteins. They just have slightly different cooking times and you just need to be mindful of that. This recipe is really just about convenience. So you can use whatever you have in your fridge and prevent wastage. This is important as well because when you're thinking about cooking, it's not really just the cooking process, but it's also getting together all the ingredients you need and then also cleaning up. So having a recipe like this, which is flexible and which can use whatever you have in your fridge means that you can eliminate having to buy stuff in advance deliberately to cook a dish. So starting off with the chicken, last night we had a whole roasted chicken and I have left over a half of a breast and a leg. So once again, super simple. Same as with the vegetables, we're just trying to dice the chicken into small bite-sized pieces that have a similar size to the rest of the vegetables. 
So next we have these amazing sausages which are made from pork raised by our friends Alicia and Ryan on Radical Roots Farm. Same principle applies here. We want to quarter up the sausages so that they're in small cubes that are about the same size as the rest of the ingredients. So because the sausages are raw, it's possible they might crumble a little bit as I'm cutting into them, but that's totally fine. This recipe works really well with minced meat as well. And on top of that, similar to the vegetables, we want to keep raw meat separate from cooked meat because this will take a little bit more time to brown in the pan, whereas with the chicken, we just need to heat it through. So to start off with the cooking process, we pop in some cooking fat. We're using grass-fed ghee here, but other great options include olive oil or avocado oil. Once the pan is hot, we start by browning our sausage. Once the sausage is browned, we want to remove it from the pan. To make cleanup easier, we can pop it right back into the original bowl we used to store it when it was raw, since we'll be putting it back into the hot pan to heat up again later. After that, we throw down a bit more cooking fat followed by the onions. Once the onions are softened, we throw in the rest of the veggies. It might look like there are a ton of veggies in this pan, but with vegetables, usually they soften up and lose a lot of water in the cooking process, so the volume of the veggies will dramatically decrease as we cook them through. Once the veggies are pretty much cooked through, we throw both the sausage and the chicken back into the pan to heat them through fully. At this point, we add our seasonings. I'm using some kosher salt and some harissa seasoning. Once again, this can work with a ton of different seasonings. I usually keep it quite simple since I'm making extra here to store in the fridge and like to have relatively neutral seasonings so I can flavor leftovers with sauces or other seasonings to mix flavors up a bit. After that, we toss everything together to make sure the seasonings are fully incorporated. And that's it! From here, we scoop everything out of the pan to serve and store the extras into a storage container to cool off before refrigerating or freezing. And now that you made it this far, here's a little recap on the process. And that's all there is to it. But as we know, food can't just be convenient, it also has to be delicious. So we have two taste testers helping us out today. We have M and my sister Leslie. We're gonna taste this and let you know what they think. That's really good. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two thumbs up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. It's delicious. It's very awesome. Good. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Check out this video next for a video on how we meal prep grass-fed beef brisket and check out this video for a video that the YouTube algorithm thinks that you'll like.